Hi, I'm Dee, here at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex in the home of the Space Shuttle Atlantis. You see the Atlantis orbiter behind me, and today we're going to talk about one specific part of that orbiter, which is the Canadarm. It's called the Canadarm because it was provided by the Canadian Space Agency and because it acts as the arm of the shuttle, picking things up, putting things down, and moving them into position. It's designed a lot like the human arm. It has a shoulder that connects it to the orbiter, an elbow about halfway up, closer down to the end is the wrist, and this cylinder at the very end is called the end effector, and that's like a human hand. There are a few differences, though. Unlike the human hand, the end effector does not have fingers. Instead, it uses crisscrossed wires that are tightened and loosened to pick up objects and release them. A lot like a baby's hand when they don't use their fingers separately, but just make a fist to grab objects. Beside the end effector is a camera, and that camera connects to a monitor inside the orbiter where the mission specialist who's operating the arm can see exactly what's going on. To make it easier for the end effector to pick things up, every object that the cannon arm is going to maneuver has one of these pin systems on it where there is a three-pronged pin that the end effector can grab onto. Just above that you see a black and white target. That's so the mission specialist using that TV camera can line up the end effector just right. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own end effector out of items that you commonly have at home. What we're going to need are two cups. You can use paper or plastic, but it's easiest if you have styrofoam cups. We're also going to use a little bit of string and some clear tape. With those three things, we can make our own end effector. The first thing I need to do is cut these cups a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna take two, put them together, I like this kind because it's already got the lines on it, which makes it easy to measure. I used my scissors and I cut the one end off of that already, but just to make sure that I've got two that are the same, all you have to do is get your scissors, and if you are younger, please get your parents' permission to use scissors or have them help you with it. And I'm just going to cut this around until it is the same height as the first one. And again, because these cups have the lines on them, it makes it a lot easier. Now I have two cups with holes in them, and they nest together perfectly. What we're going to do next is add the strings. Just like the end effector has crisscrossing wires, we're going to have crisscrossing strings. In order to do that, we're going to put our cups back together, and we're going to measure out enough string that it's just about an inch longer than the two cups. And we need three pieces of string. I'm going to take my cups apart now. I'm going to start with the bottom cup. What I need to do is tape these three pieces of string inside the cup so that they're evenly spaced. I'm going to take a little piece of tape, and I found the easiest way to do this is to put the tape on the string first. Then I'm going to reach in through the hole and just tape it right in there. Most of the string is on the outside. I just need just this little bit on the inside. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, but you want to make sure they're spaced around the edges and not all clumped up on the same side. Once I've done this, it's time to assemble it into the top cup. I'm going to drop these strings all inside and push them together, and now the strings are hanging on the outside of the top cup. Again, I'm going to get a little piece of tape, and I'm going to bring this up until it makes a loop, and the loop should be about half the diameter of the cup, and then I'm going to tape this into place. I'm going to do that with all three strings. Make sure yours doesn't fall apart while you're working on it. It's easier if I keep it down on the table.
And again, I'm just going to make a little loop and tape it on the outside of the top cup. Make a little loop and tape it on the outside of the top cup. Believe it or not, that's all you have to do. And now it's time to test our end effector. Just gently twist one of the cups and you'll notice that the strings are tightening as they cross. And then we're going to open it up again and we're going to try and pick something up. So in order to pick up an object, it needs to be vertical and it needs to have a diameter that's smaller than the diameter of the cup. You're going to line this up over top and look through the middle until you're down over your object. Then you're going to twist. It doesn't matter which direction you twist in, if you're left-handed or right-handed, works the same. And once those strings are tight, you can pick your object up. To let go of it, you're just going to twist in the opposite direction, and there you have it. And that's all there is to making your own end effector. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Space Shuttle Atlantis and the Canadarm today. If you're interested in more activities like this, make sure that you visit nasa.gov for the NASA at Home, NASA STEM Engagement, and NASA Kids Club activities. This is Dee from Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex reminding you to stay safe, be creative, and keep looking up. <laughs>